Uh, I just want to welcome everyone that's here tonight and everyone that's tuned in live on Facebook. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the celebration service tonight. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, the walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. And every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. And every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your name. And blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your name, and blessed be your name of the Lord, and blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your name, and blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your name, and blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glorious name. sin Jesus is calling have you come to the end of yourself do you thirst for a drink from the well Jesus is calling oh come to the altar the Father's 
arms are open wide forgiveness is born with the precious blood of jesus christ leave behind your regrets and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait jesus is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born and jesus is calling oh come to For he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come quickly, your will be done the same. And on earth as it is 
I pray that you will be with us during the service, that we will experience your spirit in a tangible way, that we will recognize you as the King of kings and Lord of lords, and that we will not walk away here with even a little bit of doubt that we had an encounter with the King of kings. Amen. Amen. You may be 
be seated. The speaker was gewoonlijk staan. Good evening. Have, have you ever heard a sermon or read a verse and instantly thought, yo, I, I, I actually wish that that person was here to hear it? Huh? Have you ever been, the Germany will say, Pastor, depends on in which church he is, you must look after yourself and then you think to yourself, Yo, I wish Tani Betty was here. Say, kijk, rarig nie na haar self nie. <laughs> I just want to put this fan off. The band is leaving me with loads of work. I don't know if you can hear all the fans blowing onto the mic. Ek sal maar warm kry. Wat sê? Ok, nou kan ek begin preek. Or, you would, you would read a Bible verse and instantly you think of somebody else, but not, not the good not the good thinking of. Um, you would read something and instantly you would say, this verse is for that person because they struggle with this. But what we forget is, is that it's a personal relationship. When I read the Bible or listen to a sermon, I'm not listening or reading on the behalf of my brother and sister. I'm reading on behalf of myself. God is talking to me and I must make sure that I, I, I listen to what he's saying. Because he, he, it's, he's speaking to me, he's, he's speaking to me personally. And we, I've had a personal journey this week where I've tried to remind myself constantly, and this might sound silly, that, that God is real. That he's a person that we, that we have a relationship with. And oftentimes, we dilute his realness in our lives. Or let me rephrase, oftentimes, I dilute his realness in my life. And when I'm praying, I'm actually just worrying out loud. I forget that I'm having a conversation with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm actually just worrying. Actually, I'm just worrying out loud. <laughs> and we will, we will talk to God and pray with him, but... We won't expect a reply because we sometimes forget that he's a real being and he's a powerful real being. And when we pray and speak to him and when we read our Bible or listen to a sermon or whatever it may be, we must remember that God is alive and that he's talking to me. And when, he, when, when, when I realize how big and powerful God is and he's talking to me, I will listen and I will pay attention. Because God is talking to us. So I, I like doing this when people ask me about certain specific sins. I just say, I know what God told me. I don't know what I've seen. Somebody say, what do you think of this? I say, God said to me that I should rather not do this, but go read your Bible. <laughs> he, will, he, will, he will talk to you himself. Um. We cannot, I cannot, I, I can't even keep my washing up to date. How am I supposed to tell people how to live their lives? Ne? <laughs> I would rather just focus on what God is telling me and remind myself that God is real. Listen to this, Psalm 96 verse 1 to 9 says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the nations. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be reverently feared and worshipped above all, I like this, so-called gods. Above all so-called gods. For all the gods of the nations are lifeless idols. But the Lord made the heavens He's real. He's not a lifeless idol. For the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. 
bring an offering and come before him into his courts. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before and reverently fear him all the earth. And I want to go back to that part. For all the gods of the nations are lifeless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. God is alive. He's not a lifeless idol. In, in <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say it, but still Pastor Robbie email after, <laughs> afterwards. At our gym, just as you go in, there's a Buddha statue about this high. And he sits like this. And when I'm waiting for them to open the gym, I always think it's the best place to sit. <laughs> because there's, there's no chairs, it's in the middle of nowhere. So I always sit on Buddha's ads. <laughs> Because he's a lifeless idol. He's a lifeless idol. The God I serve is alive. And he's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. I have no respect for lifeless idols. (laughs) Colossians 1 verse 16 to 19 says, For it was in him that all things were created, in heaven and earth, Things seen and things unseen, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities, all things were created and exist through him. By his service intervention and for him. And he himself existed before all things, and in him all things consist. He also is the head of his body, the church. Seeing is, well, sorry, seeing, he is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that, listen to this carefully, so that he alone, in everything and in every respect, might occupy the chief place. That he alone might occupy the chief place. Stand first and be preeminent. For it has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness should dwell in him permanently. All the divine fullness dwells in Jesus Permanently. So that means that the same power that said, let there be light and spoke everything into existence, the same power that defeated death lives in Jesus permanently. And I get to have a personal, intimate relationship with that same Jesus who's very much alive and who's very much still on the throne and who's very much still king. So I have to ask myself this question is, why am I so, so worried sometimes? Why am I so worried? Jesus is alive. And the same power that raised him from the dead dwells in him for how long? Permanently. It, it, it hasn't gone away. It's not diluted. Therefore, we really have nothing to worry about because this he's king he's king he is king there were people in my life that what wa- wa- was i think they were going crazy about the elections that was happening in america because if if this person is elected and that person is not elected then everything is going to go everything is just might as well pack our bags and leave. And we cannot vote Jesus off the throne. We, he's king of kings, Lord of lords, and he will be king of kings and he will be Lord of lords till the day he comes and fetches us and eternity after that, we don't have to be worried. And here's, 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 here's the thing that makes it the best is I have an intimate relationship with that same God who is alive. That same God who's got the power. I get to go sit at his feet and listen to his words. The problem is we, we look at the American elections more than we read our Bibles. And we, we watch all these videos on Facebook of the Antichrist more than we read our Bibles. And I'm telling you that Jesus is still on his throne. I don't care what video on Facebook says what. My Bible and my personal relationship with the God that gave his life for me says he's on the throne. I don't care about the rest. Amen? Listen to what 
I want to read a verse to you tonight. Remember, this is a personal relationship. God is speaking to you. Jason will eat say. Did you answer the Hi, wife of me. Hello, Jason. <laughs> Listen to this. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not. There is nothing to fear. For I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand and righteousness and justice. God is saying to each and every one of us personally, I am your God. Fear not, for there is nothing to fear. Fear not, for there's nothing to fear. God will remain king. He will remain in control. The worst thing that can happen is I can die. But that's also the best thing that can happen because Jesus is real. He is real. So what? fear not, for there is nothing to fear. But we need to get personal again. We need to take God, we, which has for many of us become an idea or, or a philosophy or, or a way of life, we must take that and make it personal again and make sure that I am spending personal time with him. You cannot have a relationship with somebody and just talk about them. You cannot have a, rela- you cannot have a meaningful conversation with somebody if you just talk about them or hear about them. Speak to them. Be with them. God is speaking to us personally, each and every one of us. So we need, to, we need to change our mindset. So I've stopped reading the Bible for other people. If, if the Bible says, do not swear, I make sure that, that, that God is speaking to me. I don't care what you are doing. God is speaking to me. It's a personal relationship between me and him. And that's where it starts. And that's, I think that's what we've forgotten. If, if, if I look at the people in my lives and I look at all these things that's happening, we, are, we forget that we have a personal relationship with Jesus. And he desires to speak to us. He desires to be close to us. And we, we have his word at our disposal. It's on our bed, Kasi. It's, it's, it's on our phones. It's on the internet. But we talk about God more than we talk to him. Is it just me? I, I will admit that for, for lately, that was I spoke about God more than I spoke to him. When is the last time that we really sat at God's feet and said, I'm going to speak to God. I'm going to pray like he's actually listening because he is actually listening. And I'm going to spend time with him. Psalm 145, verse 18 to 20 says, The Lord is near to all, to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him sincerely and in truth. He will fulfill the desires of those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserves all all those who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Let's think for a moment how powerful verse 18 is. I'm going to read it again. And think for a moment what, 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 what we are reading here. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him sincerely and in truth. So that means by default, if I'm sitting here tonight or standing here tonight up here and I feel that God is far from me, it means I haven't been calling on him. I haven't been spending time with him. I haven't been calling upon him. I haven't had a conversation with him. Have you ever heard somebody pray, but they're actually just preaching to you? (laughs) They're praying, but actually they're preaching. You get a husband and wife, dear Lord Jesus, we pray that you will make us soft. (laughs) Take away this anger. (laughs) Let somebody wash the dishes. (laughs) 
God is alive. God is alive. Imagine you got a WhatsApp like that. <laughs> when is the last time you spoke to God? When is the last time you spoke to God? When is the last time you spoke to God like he's alive? When is the last time you believe that when I'm going to pray now, God is going to is going to hear my prayer and he's going to answer me. When is the last time I called upon the Lord? When is the last time I sat at his feet and I spent time with him? Imagine we would pray, I think we would pray a lot differently if we sincerely believed that God was listening. And I'm not saying that we are faithless, but sometimes we just get in this rut and, and the world is tough out there and things are happening we don't understand and we don't know what's gonna happen in three months or four months time from now, but we do know that God will be on the throne. So sometimes it's good for us to worry out loud. We're allowed to vent to God. We're allowed to, to speak to him about our fears and our frustrations and our anxieties but that's not all we can talk about with him. We need to speak to him because he's alive and he's the king of kings and say, God, what is it that you want to tell me? What is it you want to say to me? What is it you want me to do? Open up that two-way communication. Psalm 66 verse 19 says, but certainly God has heard me. He has given heed to the voice of my prayer. But certainly God has has heard me. He has given heed to the voice of my prayer. God did not fall asleep at the wheel, ladies and gentlemen. He's not losing control of the situation. He is alive and he's where he's supposed to be on the throne and he's working his plan. And if we were to sit at his feet and actually speak to him and spend time with him, we would not be so anxious. We would not be so worried. Because we know that God is on the throne. As a child, if you went with your parents somewhere, you didn't worry where you were going. Am I correct? You got in the car and you went. Look at the <laughs> have you ever but have you been driving and you got lost but you didn't want the people who were driving with you to know that you were lost well <laughs> Philip God's not like that he's not lost he's he's going where he's going and he will be on the throne and he will be king. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we spend that personal time with him. So that he gets, so that we get to know him. He knows us, so that we can close to him, intimately with him. You will not, I need to say this, I need to think before I speak. Sorry. Yeah, Kleister Pastor Ruby. Filters. I'm thinking in Afrikaans and I have to translate it. You will not invite somebody into your honeymoon bed if you do not know them. Amen? God is preparing for us a honeymoon bed. We better make sure we know him intimately. Otherwise, we won't be invited. Otherwise, we won't be invited. God is alive. John, 1 John 15 verse 14 to 15 says, and this is the confidence which we have in him. We are sure that if we ask anything according to his will, he listens to and hears us. And if since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know 
with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us as our present possession the request made of him. I want to go back just a little bit. It says, and we are sure, where is that? That he, he listens to and hears us. God listens to us and he hears us. God listens to us and hears us. The question is, do he, well, obviously he does, but think about this in a metaphorical way. Do he recognize us? If we were to <coughs> think of a person you are very close with and intimate with, if you were to be closed in a room with a bunch of people shouting your name, would you recognize that person's voice if they were in that room? If you, if you were in a room full of people and your husband and wife was also in there and they would call you, everybody would call you, would you recognize the person you love? Would you? Why? You know the voice. Why do you know the voice? Because you have a relationship with it. So when, when you say, I don't hear the voice of God, I'm just going to say to you, no, you don't recognize the voice of God. Because we don't spend time with him. We're not in his word. When God speaks, you will know it. You will know it and you would recognize him. But he speaks through his word first and foremost. God wants us to spend time with us. He wants it. He desires it. He craves it. He wants us to spend that personal time with us. And the, the wonderful thing about this is that if we did that, our fears and anxieties would disappear because we would see who is in charge. We would see who is in the throne, on the throne. We would see who's making the world go around. We read in Colossians earlier, it says that all things exist through him and for him. All things exist in him and through him. But if we could just for a moment see him on the throne, I'm telling you, we would not be worried about anything, because God is in control. He is on the throne. Let's close our eyes. I want to ask you a question tonight. When is the last time you spoke to God? When is the last time you spoke to God? Let's take a minute. No music, no nothing. Let's take a minute. And let's speak to God. Amen. Amen. Did you speak to God? I think the people on Facebook was like, "He can't work all day." We should actually preach one day while they listen. Go.
No, it's on Facebook, the sound is working. Listen to what God is saying. Fear not. There is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. Amen. We have to go this week and spend time with God. I want to challenge you. Go and talk to your father. Go and talk to the king. Go and spend time with him. And I guarantee you, things might around you might stay the same. But in here, there will be a change that you would recognize. <clears throat> I'm going to close with this. We have gotten, as, as church, we've gotten so anti-religious. Ne? You'll hear people say, I'm not religious, I'm in a relationship. To the extent that we forget that a relationship is work. I have to put in the time. I have to make sure that I spend time with God. I have to open my Bible. It's not an act of religion to spend time with somebody. It's not an act of religion to read your Bible and to pray. There's no relationship without communication. Amen? Let's close with prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you will be with us during this week. Thank you that we can spend time with you. Thank you that we can be intimate with you. Thank you that we can have encounters with you day in and day out. Lord Jesus, I pray that, that, we will, that you will reignite us a passion for your word. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I hope that you have a wonderful week and that you spend as much time with God as you possibly can. Bye-bye.